Welcome back, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Vaysbrook. I'm a host of the Let's Dive In. I know you remember us as the love of acting. We are rebranding, hopefully trying to offer you something a little different and a little more interesting. And I have a wonderful actor to do that with. Please welcome Jonathan Adams. You've seen him on Last Man Standing, which used to be on ABC, and now it's on Fox. Uh, you've heard his voice, including in my favorite, uh, um, my favorite animated uh, series, uh, which is uh, Avatar. So you've heard him as the voice of Batu in uh, in Korra. Uh, it's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it's it's been it's been a few years, I know. So welcome, welcome to the program, Jonathan Adams. All right, thanks. I'm glad to be here, man. Batu. Yeah, yeah that like... was my favorite. It's my favorite line of all time. I got to say, I got to say, I am evil, which you never get to say. You know, you get to say things like, oh, I'm not a nice guy or I'm, I'm going to get you. No, yeah. I am evil. Come on. That's all I am. I'm just pure evil. It's perfect. And as, as somebody who has kids, I know you have two daughters. I have two kids. Uh, sometimes your kids think you're evil. In this case, they could literally <laughs> point to it and say, Dad, that's what I'm talking about. All I got from them was, oh, good job, Dad. <laughs> I like that. No, it was it was great. Anyway, so um, I, I appreciate you coming on, and I want to talk to you about your life. Uh, you've done a lot of very interesting things, but it's not just in the acting world. Um, you know, you've done a lot of stuff that I think would be very useful for people to know about and to hopefully apply to their lives. So right. let's dive in. Um, so for people who are not as familiar with you as I am, uh, let's give them a you know a one minute uh, kind of an overview of who you are and how you got to where you are right now. I'm Jonathan Adams. I, I, I spent a lot of time on stage for the first, I've been acting for like 30 some odd years, I think, since mm -hmm. I was 20 years old. I'm in my 50s now. And I've been professionally acting. I've never had to have a job other than acting for 30 years. And I'm really so proud of that. You know, either mm -hmm. voiceover or whatever for 30 years. I spent like 13 years of, my, of the beginning of my career on stage. I did a lot of Shakespeare. I did a lot of August Wilson, a lot, a lot of Apple Fugard, you know, so, uh, and then um, I came into the world of television. I've been on television since the, since 2000. Yeah, and a ton of voiceover work, which we'll definitely dive into yes. a little bit as well. So um, in terms of a career choice, right? So you, you've mentioned something, which is great. You haven't had to have another job other than acting, which is amazing and a, and a rarity in our industry. But why this career choice? As you know, as somebody who has changed his career many times already, uh, I <laughs> hope my wife is not watching this. Um, uh, why did you choose acting, and what led you to make that particular decision? Well, in the beginning, to me, it was—I um, really only felt comfortable doing it. That was the only thing I felt comfortable doing. I, it's the only thing I loved to do, and I was you know was so you know i'm an actor it's so dramatic that I, I felt like all i could do was act you know so it's like i had to do it i had i really didn't feel like i had any other choice in the beginning um at first you know for a long time i wanted to be for of all things an astronaut i wanted to go to space and um i was like you know then i have to learn how to fly then i have to learn how to do all these things I was born with a cataract in this eye. I can't really see out of this eye very well. So, like, you know, I can't fly, you know. And I'm also too big. I, I read, you know, really recently that, not recently, but, you know, in my teens, that, you know, most of the astronauts were between 5'6 and 5'10. You know, you really couldn't. And, and at 13, I was six feet tall. So <laughs> I couldn't do that. And um, so I just was like, you know, I love this. This is what I love and this is what I'm going to do. And um, Luckily, I have been incredibly blessed with uh, in my career, and uh, you know, able to raise a family, you know, have a wife, have a home, and and do you know all the things that you that everybody does, you know, with with their life, and still and just enjoy it. Yeah, and uh, again, life as an actor is is a lot of ups and downs. There's no it is. no particular way that it goes. There's no formula. It's just work hard. Hopefully you're good enough. Hopefully you've made enough connections where people enjoy working with you. 
and kind of keep plugging away and uh, you know things may or may not happen. Yeah, it's not a straight line. And I always say that to everybody. I've had my ups and downs. I've had points where I was like, okay, uh, I'm, you know, we have $20 and uh, we have to pay the electric bill and uh, it's not coming in. Oh, look, a residual check. You know what I mean? I've had moments like that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm serious, like last $20, like not even any more money, you know, nothing. Here's your $20. Oh, look, a residual check. Oh, great. Now we can pay the electric bill and maybe the rent and maybe something else will come in. Oh, I got another gig. And it would, you know, it would always come down to that. And I've, um, you know, I, it's just, yeah, I've been really blessed. Yeah. So, and you, you kind of alluded to it, but, you know, a segment on the show is trying to figure out the good, bad, the ugly of, of your life and the profession. So, you know, what's, what's the good that came with you being an actor? Well, the good was my emotional health because I'm not, you know, I was, I really feel like I would have been incredibly unhappy doing anything else. Mm -hmm. And the good was, you know, the fact that, you know, at this point in my career, I feel like my family is, is the right where it needs to be. You know, I have a, kid grad who graduated from college uh, from Pepperdine. She's a biology major of all things. She was a biology major. Now she's a biologist. So I guess, so that's what's what it is. Uh, and, uh, and she is, you know, moving on with a career. She wants to be a vet. I have a younger daughter who just is about to graduate from high school, just turned 18. And we're, you know, she's got a, you know, a good grade point average, just got accepted to two colleges. And we're just like, I don't know. Uh, it's just like a happy life right now. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a good, good thing. And some mm -hmm. of the bad things are the ups and downs of this, of this career. You, know, you really are never feeling like you are completely secure unless you have really made, um, you know, some good choices in terms of your money. You know what I mean? You really need to take, make good choices with your money. Um, you can't think like, you know, most other people do and think, like, you know, all the money is just going to keep coming in. You have to go, OK, well, I have to save this and work through this year and save this. And maybe I might not work next year and say, you know, so you need to uh, be very, very uh, mindful of that. And uh, yeah, so I mean, it's just. There's a lot, of, lot of goods and bads. Yeah. So in terms of money, before we dive into the ugly aspects, but uh about the money, I think that's actually, you know, it's more difficult, but it's it's a positive uh, uh, or a silver lining, I think would be a better way of saying it, of having to learn how to manage money and how to save and how to make sound investments, because a lot of the people run into issues where they have uh, a ton of uh, credit card debts or they make uh, purchases that they really uh, get hamstrung with for a long time. You had to learn early on that you cannot do that. So I think it, overall, it should have been a positive uh, experience and hopefully for your kids as well watching. Well, yes. I mean, you really do have to make some, some strange choices, you know, like you, Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to be making a hundred thousand dollars on this gig, but I don't know if that's going to be like my last gig of the year or my mm -hmm. last gig for the next two years. So, um, I think I will only buy that Honda Civic, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to spend, you know, yeah. I want a, I want a very, very low uh, car note. You know, what I mean? I'm not going to spend a lot of money uh, on everything. So this might be, I might, that might be the hundred thousand dollars I get for the next two years. And so you have to really um, think that way. You have to, you know, save and make sure that uh, you know you you make a plan for those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, any ugly things that uh, that come to mind? Uh, of being an actor, something that you have to deal with that you know other people in different professions don't. Well, it's not. I mean, you are constantly judged, and I suppose that is you know, is an ugly thing. I mean, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I really, like I said, I've never really done anything much of anything else other than act. So um, I'm not sure how other people in other careers are maybe you know judged. But I, you know, I feel like every time I go into an audition or every time I'm um, I put myself out there for something. I feel like I'm being constantly assessed and reassessed, and it's totally a um, 
it's absolutely you know subjective nothing nothing no, no objectivity involved you are just you know it's like hmm, how do i feel about you and you know what i mean not you know it's not like oh oh you're you know you you reach this certain level you can do this or you've done these number of surgeries you can do this or you you know how to do this and you can do that you know it's not like that it's like hmm how do i feel about jonathan adams today hmm he's getting old hmm he's getting fat hmm oh man what is that going on with his eye you know i'm just like you, you you're very it's a very subjective uh career so and i don't like that uh i certainly understand that uh, it's 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 a weird thing right we we as artists we want to be out there we want to be mm -hmm. loved and admired and yes. appreciated but we're getting mostly the opposite and it's it's right, a fun dynamic. right. well i think we mostly concentrate on the opposite i think sometimes there's a there's a lot of positivity out there and you really have to concentrate on that but uh, you do have to i think have an eye on you know what the uh how really people perceive you and um and how it's going to work for you and against you. And, uh, but mostly, mostly people are great. You know, people are fans and people enjoy watching. I mean, if they enjoy watching what you do and you keep doing it, that's the idea, right? And um, so that's all. Do you ever get, uh, in terms of the judgment uh, and fans specifically, I know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna be doing another kind of uh, episode that deals uh, with this, but I wanted to ask uh, from your perspective, um having done a ton of the interviews with people and seeing what the comments are uh i would do an interview with somebody who's you know incredibly beautiful uh, actress and a lot of the comments are about the lips and the looks and uh, mm -hmm. how they want to marry her uh it's mm -hmm. it's that upsets me as a person and and i i really have to be very very specific of not responding to that trigger mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. so because you've been on a show for you know now eight years and uh, you've been on other shows uh have you seen anything from uh, from people i mean you you're mentioning you know about uh, you getting older and, uh, and gaining weight have you seen negative <laughs> comments from people that uh, that deal with it or well, no absolutely but here's the thing i don't respond to them because i don't it doesn't matter i respond only to positive things i let people only see that you know i'm, I'm you know if it's positive Oh, Jonathan, great job. I go, hey, thanks. You know, or Jonathan, oh, he's getting whatever. Oh, I don't say a thing. You know, I just don't deal with it. I just, and I think you, in a way, uh, you know, train people to be like, okay, well, he might respond to me if I say something positive. And there you have it. If they say, if you say something negative, nothing's going to come of it. And maybe, maybe they might, you know, get, you know, other people talking about it, but you're, you're not going to say it. Does it, it's it's a very good way of doing it uh, uh, and educating your uh, your base. But does it bother you? Uh, do you take any of the comments uh, personally? I know I do. <laughs> I try not to. <laughs> um, I try not to. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do. Sometimes I misunderstand, yeah. and, and sometimes I'm I'm you know I I feel misunderstood, and then I'm just like you know what it doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep doing what I do. Sometimes I take it personally, but then I, it takes me a while. I take, give it a minute, process it, step away. I'm good. Yeah, and I um, watching some of the interviews that you have done before and reading about you. I know you're a man of faith. So, uh, what role does faith play in your everyday life? Uh, you know, inside the acting world and outside. Well. Um, Faith is, uh, to me, the opposite of fear. You have to, have, in order to have faith, you, you cannot have uh, any fear. And I also feel like acting, you, you, fear does not help. Mm -hmm. You know, fear is absolutely the, you know, will not help you at all in your in your acting career. Mm -hmm. So that has really, really helped me. Like fear and faith are opposites, and I. I, I feel like I can do anything because I feel like I'm not afraid of anything. You know what I mean? I, I'm just, or if I am afraid of something, I embrace the fear, move past it, and make it work for me. You know what I mean? 
So it's not, so that, that really has helped me. And uh, I also couldn't see, you know, when you're in the, the, you know, the downsides to me, prayer and communing with God has really helped me in, in those moments when I don't feel like there's any future, you know, in my career or something is just really not going well for me. Uh, and, you know, that being in prayer and being prayerful uh, in those moments has helped me. And I've also learned to be prayerful in the moments when things are going well, they're really making it a point in my mind to thank God for the good things in my life and thank God for, you know, everything that is, you know, good about, you know, my experience on this earth. And um, yeah, that I mean, so I've just, I just make it a point to pray all the time, you know, pray about everything, worry about nothing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I had some, you know, medical things that I was dealing with, medical issues, and I remember driving, you know, last week to uh, to have a procedure. And I am a very positive person. I'm a very kind of easygoing, uh, optimistic person. But mm -hmm. I couldn't get over the anxiety and the fear and everything that goes right. with it. And I tried all sorts of different things. And I tried, uh, you know, some of it worked, some of it did not. And mm -hmm. then I kept on going back to uh, Bridge of Spies. Do you remember Bridge of Spies? Uh, you know Tom Hanks and uh, Mark Rylance were. I didn't in. see that movie. Oh, I... you you have to. And by the way, for everybody watching, we're going to put a link to it uh, below. Please watch the movie. Uh, there's a part in Bridge of Spies that, for me, from a mental perspective, uh, yeah. I I now have that in the back of my mind, actually in the front of my mind, and I keep going back to it, which is a phrase that Mark Mark Ryk, Mark Rylance, his character, uh, who plays a Russian spy was mm -hmm. saying and tom hanks would go to him and say listen you know you're you're facing the death penalty how are you so calm how are you not worried about this and mark rylance would turn to him and said will it help do you never worry would it help and, uh and i keep going back to that mm -hmm. anytime i get into my fear and i get into the anxiety i ask the question of will it help and right. the answer is no, it will not. It never does. It, it never does. Not. Yeah. Um, Fear, anxiety, jealousy mm -hmm. don't help. Right. Are you, if you're jealous of someone, what are you doing? You're feeling bad. They have no idea that you're feeling bad. They're happily going on about their lives. Mm -hmm. And they have no idea that you're feeling bad about how well their life is going. Their life is going well. Or whatever they have is great. And you and you're and you're upset about it. Jealousy is useless, absolutely useless. So anyway, but continue. No, I, I completely agree with you, and it's 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 the part of maturization process, right? I'm I'm a little right. younger than you, are, but not by much. And um, it's learning, it's learning of how to work with yourself and learning how to keep yourself uh, in a positive uh, state of mind. Another thing that I keep going back to is that. I've noticed, and you know, I ask myself that question uh, because I think the thoughts could be either creative or destructive. So mm -hmm. when I have a thought or where I notice myself going into a negative pattern, I immediately try to ask myself, does it help or will it help? Mm -hmm. And then are you being creative or destructive right now? And mm -hmm. that kind of, those are the things that kind of help me get out of it. And then my faith is a continuation of all of that, of, okay, right. Re regain my balance, and I need to go back to who I really am, as opposed to right. the person who's spiraling right now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, relationships. I want to talk to you about relationship because uh, you know I've been married for 21 years, uh, 22 years this year. You're 27. Is it going to be 27 this year or 28? One. And it was, we were married in '94. Yeah, it'll be 27. Okay. So again, you're 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 ahead, you know, by by five years and kind of everything that we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. But you're married in Hollywood, uh, and I'm married. You know, my wife is kind of outside the business. Not kind. My wife is completely outside the business. Not that I'm really in the business. I don't live in LA. I'm in Chicago, so it's a very different environment to be in. But um, I used to live in well, Chicago. Go ahead. I know you're from Pittsburgh originally. When did you live in Chicago? 
I lived in Chicago from 90, well, after I got married, 94 to 97, we lived on uh, Sheridan Road, just south of Evanston. Steps from the lake, they said. Yeah. And you could actually, if you looked, at, you know, kind of out the corner, you could kind of see the, you know, a corner of one window, you could see Lake Michigan. Yeah. Right yeah, where, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. You're in the Northwestern, uh, Northwestern University area. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I love Chicago. Chicago is great. I, uh, when people ask me, you know, why Chicago, you, you know, the weather is weird and uh, all sorts of things. I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't think of any other place in the United States that with everything that I like, and you take the pros and cons, I can't think of any other mm -hmm. place that I would like more right. that has better things for me. So Chicago is my my top. It's great. Yeah. Um, back uh, back to your uh, <laughs> back to your question. Back to my relationship. Continue. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a uh, you know knock on wood and cross the fingers, and you're doing great. But in Hollywood, that type of a longevity is a rarity. So how do you deal? with that what were some of the things that you've done in your relationships that really helped uh make sure that it's a healthy long-term relationship and then hopefully people can use it outside of it as well my uh wife and i got married long before i came to hollywood maybe okay. seven years before i came to hollywood we were, we were married we we were married uh we were both theater actors as it were we met on a show um she doesn't act anymore she used to be a uh, a theater an actor and a singer she was an excellent singer she uh, was uh, um, classically trained in opera and um we uh i gotta say marriage is not um it's not always uh easy is a thing and i think people are uh, expect that and i think that's what makes it uh more likely for people to get divorced like not every day is going to be a happy-go-lucky day you're going to have ups and downs in your marriage you know what i mean you're going to be uh angry with each other you're going to be upset with it you're going to find things about your partner that you don't necessarily like and then you realize well i still love her or i still love him so here we are and let's just deal with what this is and maybe we can talk it out together and i think that's what it is you know and i also feel like and i've said this before and i think it's kind of um um apt is that um you you the two of you each of you together are nurturing one thing and that is the marriage you know what I mean? Like, I am Jonathan, she is Monica, but we, each of us individually, are taking care of Jonathan and Monica. You know what I mean? We are, we are trying to nurture and take care of that relationship that's there for us. You know what I mean? So it, it, you maintain your individuality, but you are always careful of and caring for the, the couple. Yeah. that makes sense and we yeah. do i mean and i feel like it, when when we're outside of that when we're not thinking about that that's when things are are bad you know if you don't think of the other or think of the relationship that's when things are bad yeah. and that's what you always have to do i mean it's not selfless but it's definitely not selfish do you know what i mean so mm -hmm. um if you are always constantly kind of thinking of what is good for us, then you will always be uh, maintain a, um, a togetherness. And when you get, step away from that, that's when you uh, that's when things go wrong. Yeah, absolutely. It makes a lot of sense. I did hear you uh, say that before, so I'm very happy you uh, you mentioned it on this show. Um, <laughs> it's it's a really important factor because we tend to as people get really self-focused and we get to uh try to figure out what is good for me and then you get out of the whole idea of marriage and being together and what is good for her my wife is my best friend i've known her since she was 15 mm -hmm. years old we did not get married that young we got married quite a bit later but i've known her for a long time 
So right. it's my responsibility as a husband and as a friend to ensure that I do things that will be better for her, not just for our marriage, but what can I do in order to help her grow? Yeah. Because I want to see that growth. I'm proud of the woman that she has become. So if the focus is there, then I'm less focused on what is it that I don't like? It's not necessarily about me. And I like how you said it. It's it's not about being selfish or selfless. It's really that in-between part of mm -hmm. you're not forgetting yourself, but your focus is on the whole rather than the self. Yeah, yeah. And if you and if you both do that, then you're you'll be fine. And and um and I also have to, you know, say my wife is like is an incredible person. She's just a she's just a, a good, good woman and a good person. And um and she's also <laughs> incredibly loyal. She's a very loyal person. And that is one of one of her, you know, she's honest with herself, good and loyal. And like what what the heck? What else are you gonna need in life? You know what I mean? <laughs> she, she's honest with herself and others, good and loyal. I, who what else are you gonna need? There's nothing else you can you can ask for out of a out of a out of a partner. So I'm you know I feel incredibly blessed to have her, and I feel like like you said, um, which is you know going off of what I said, you know we are working together to create something. Yeah, uh, and by the way, this is March 9th. Yesterday was March 8th, which is the um, you know. Uh, International Women's Day, so it's a little late, but better late than ever to all the women who are watching. Happy uh, Women's Day. We appreciate you. We love Absolutely, you. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, last thing that I want to touch upon, and I know, you know, you and I can talk for a lot longer, and uh, you're, yeah. welcome. you're welcome back on the show so we can continue, but um, in this, you know, interesting time of, uh, of the United States that we find ourselves in, I think yeah. the show that you're on is a wonderful avenue to have uh, discussions. Uh, Last Man Standing, where you know you're uh, the Chuck Larrabee, you're representing a you know one type of a perspective, and then uh, Tim Allen's character is representing another type of perspective. Uh, another show that I'm going to be doing a little bit later is when people are in within the family or within a you know close friend community. How do we talk to each other? where we are diametrically opposed uh, from our perspectives or political spectrum or anything else. How do we maintain a healthy relationship when people think what the other person believes is nuts? And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a fascinating subject to me. And I think your show deals with uh, that and provides an avenue for people to, uh, to explore it. And I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, that's crazy. I mean, I leave my house all the time without an ID. Really? <laughs> What a magical world you live in. Oh, please, Joe, tell me more. I can't believe this happened to you. I mean, you're, you're Chuck. Can we give it a rest, guys? I'm just trying to understand. And I want you to understand, man. I just don't want to have to be the one to help you process what I'm going through. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think that that yeah, that's exactly what it does. But I don't, I don't know that I ever think <sighs> it's hard though in, in this in this day and age not to think of some of the things that people think are nuts, right. are nuts. Yeah, I I, I don't. <sighs> it's really really difficult. I mean, I, I just think we've gotten to a point of. Um, Division for the sake of division. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, there was, there was a, a comedian who, who was talking about the news, and the news has become like uh, your instigator friend, the one who is like, oh, this is what they said. This is, they're, they're, you know, this is what one side thinks about what you said, and yeah. this is what the other side thinks about what you said. And that's really all that it's become, as opposed to you know, there was a, you know, a fire in Bangladesh. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it's really, a, you know, oh, and this is what everybody thinks about what you said. And this is what everybody thinks about what he said. And I'm like, is that helpful? 
No. You know what I mean? I don't think that that's very helpful. The, the, the instigator, man. Um, people, I don't, I wish I had a solution for these days. Because I used to think that we could all communicate. If I really sat down with someone, I could really, really make it clear that, you know, I respect your view, but here's mine. And I hope you respect it as well. And I don't feel that that is the way people are dealing now. And personally, you know, like uh, Tim and I have pretty different views on like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm much more of a, of a, of a, liberal and he's much more of a conservative although i think i'm more of a social conservative and he's more of a social liberal and mm -hmm. i think that's kind of weird but we're that we can talk about it we, each of us can 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 discuss these things mm -hmm. you know and and hear the other person's perspective and may not you know agree or or think that it's a good idea but at least it's heard respectfully and i think that we've lost lost a lot of that in the in the last uh 10 years or so yeah it's that the respect factor i think is that bridge between people yeah and uh, if, if people can have the respect then they're not interested in hearing what the other person has to say and really thinking it through and that yes. I, I that's where it's lost and i completely agree with you the instigator part it doesn't do anything other than really allow people to uh, to bask in their own ego and insecurities. Right, right. So I'm, I'm, you know, I I have hope. I always have hope, and I always have, uh, you know, faith. And I, but I, you know, it's getting thinner and thinner. The ice. So I'm, you know, <laughs> hopefully we won't plunge into something really, really horrible. I hope not as well. And uh, those of you who are watching us and listening to us on, on the podcast part of this, um, please have respect for each other. It's difficult. Believe me, it's difficult. But let's see if we can get to at least a common place of having respect for the other person as a person. Yeah, and then we right. can get to the point where you know, we can disagree on things but still have that level of respect. Um, I agree. Thank you, Jonathan. It's it's uh, it's been a real pleasure having you on. Um, I really really appreciate it. I wish you the best of luck. The show is doing great on on Fox. You're doing awesome in the voiceover Thank you. community. So keep it keep it going. You remembered Batu, you know. I'm I just did. really impressed with Bot. I'm really impressed you remembering Batu. So Thank there you go. I'm, I'm telling you, I, Avatar is my favorite animated series of all time. Uh, it was pretty good. Yeah, to be fair, Cora I liked a little less than uh, than the you know the original. Uh, I agree. Uh, Sorry. You know, both both are awesome, and I had my kids watch it. So the fun part of that show, by the way, was I watched it myself. Then mm -hmm. my daughter, who's uh, you know going to be 17 this year, I watched it with her uh, a number of years back. And then my mm -hmm. son, who's five years younger than her, I watched it with him. So I got a chance to kind of do it over and over. And over. That's great. It's awesome. Maybe one of the other reasons why I remember Vato is because I've watched it so many times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so That's thanks impressive. again, Jonathan, and uh, thanks to everybody for uh, for watching. We appreciate it. Let us know what you think. Please watch, uh, you know, Bridge of Spies. Please watch, um, you know, Last Men Standing. All of the links for yeah. Jonathan are right below. All right. Thank you so much. My pleasure.